Not gonna lie, I enjoyed taking five weeks away from work, but if there was one thing that I missed while I was away, it was this TV. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today we're gonna unbox, set up, and get basic impressions off of this, the Sony A80J OLED TV. Now, if you've seen our reviews, you may know that we've already reviewed the Sony A90J TV, that would be the bigger cousin to this TV. That TV, while super luscious, is holy crap, majorly expensive. Cost prohibitive for most folks, I think. This TV, a little bit more approachable, though still pricey. And also, I think, going to be one of the most competitive OLED TVs of the year. Before we start cutting tape and busting into this box, I've seen you in the comments. I know you've been looking forward to this review, but let's be honest, this TV has been reviewed already. So what is it that you need to know about this TV in the review? I wanna address each and every one of those points. So hurry up, get in the comments right now and leave a comment about what you need to know about this TV because I will be reading those the morning that I shoot the review video for this. And while you're down there, click like and subscribe. We're trying to grow this channel. We went past 800,000 and subs, I wanna hit 900,000, and by the end of the year, one million, you're gonna help me do that. I really appreciate it. Let's go. So what's in the box, Caleb? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is what comes in the box. You've got two legs. We're gonna have to talk about that later. You'll notice there's no screws. That's part of the whole setup thing that we'll get to in a minute. We've got a uh, non backlit remote, two AAA batteries, power cable, one lonely little zip tie, and a Moby Dick sized pile of product literature, which normally I just get rid of, but keep this setup guide around because it will come in handy. Here's why you wanna keep that setup guide around. There are three different stand configurations. This is the one we're gonna go with. I'll show you why in a moment. This is the, I don't have a very big media stand and I need the legs closer together position. There are instructions there for taking this stuff apart, reassembling it, and then you insert it into the TV. Here is the, I have a sound bar and I need more elevation. Uh, same thing, you're gonna take these apart, reassemble them and put them in the TV. We are going with the wide, low slung look because that's the look I like and also because it's very easy to install. Unfortunately, no screwing involved. So for that low slung look, super easy. Just take the feet as they come out of the box, slide them in and they lock into place. And here we are with the back of the TV shot. That was remarkably easy setup, by the way. I love that. And as far as the back of a TV goes, the looks, I like it. I know you don't look at the back of the TV very often, but this is pretty classy. I like the textured plastic here. The OLED panel though, that thin profile, gets me every time. Anyway, uh, we've got our power port here, and then over on the far side, we've got all of our inputs. You'll notice four HDMI inputs, two of which are marked 4K, 120 hertz. We'll dig into that in the full review, just what it can and can't do. The other thing worth noting back here is that it does have a center channel speaker input, although unlike the A90J, it's not speaker wire terminals, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone style jack, which is shared with the analog video and audio break-in cable, which by the way, doesn't come in the box. So you can use the TV sound system, which is the screen by the way, as a center channel speaker, but it's gonna require a little trickier setup. All right, we're all set up, about ready to turn the TV on, but before I do, can we just acknowledge this TV looks fantastic. It's very classy. Uh, part of that is the stand. I like the low slung look. Not quite as low as the A90J, but still very sleek, very thin profile, and a fair amount of anti-glare on the screen, which is a, a great thing. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Now, I know this runs on Google TV. That's the replacement for Android TV, and it's a system that I personally happen to like. Uh, it's a little bit catered towards those who own an Android phone, which I used to, but I recently switched back to iPhone, so we'll see how this works out. Now you can just set up the basic TV if you want to. Uh, that's gonna look for external devices and if you're connected to an antenna, try and find all your local stations. I wanna set up the full Google TV experience because I'm gonna be using those apps. So we'll go ahead and get into that. And again, if you have the Google Home app, whether you're on iOS or Android, go ahead and get that opened because this is gonna make things extremely simple. So it turns out as long as you've got the Google app on your phone, whether it's 
iOS or Android, uh, this process is super easy. Go ahead and go into the Google Home app and scan the QR code as I'm doing here. And you automatically set up the TV from here on out. You're going to name the TV, give it your Wi-Fi information. It's gonna double check which apps you want to have installed. It's gonna ask you about whether you wanna use the voice assistant. And if you've set up Google Voice Assistant in the past, then it's gonna recognize your individual voice and therefore make individual recommendations. Now, as you go further through the process, it's going to ask you if you want to allow it uh, to send certain information, advertise to you in certain ways. Make sure you're really careful about the selections that you make during that process. But I got to say, doing it on your phone is so much easier than doing it on the TV. With that said, eventually you are going to have to finish things up on the TV. And that's where you're going to get into more terms and conditions you want to watch out for. A couple of other details, Samba TV here. No, I never use that. We'll disable that. Yes, I'm absolutely sure we want to disable that. And once that's done, it's going to start installing the apps that I previously indicated I wanted installed. And here we are. This looks exactly like Chromecast with Google TV looks like at my home. It's all personalized already. Uh, my apps are already installed. My question is, has it logged me in? Because I tell you what, that is a major pain point for me. I know it's because I set up a lot of TVs, but will it automatically log me into Netflix? Yes, Google Smart Lock. So it presented me with the options that I had, and indeed it has logged me into Netflix automatically. We'll come back to Netflix in a minute. Let me back out of this and check some other apps. Now, since YouTube is a Google property, I'm hoping that it will automatically sign me in. And sure enough, it's gonna allow me to do that. Folks, this is why I love Google TV. It's just so easy and customized to me. You guys know that I've been a fan of Roku in the past, and I still like Roku, but I'm switching teams, folks. Google TV is where it's at for me, and it's just because it's so easy. No password entry is a big deal for me. Now let's take a look at some settings. And the thing about Sony is that their picture presets are really excellent right out of the box. Now, a lot of folks are gonna pick the standard mode, which is what the TV comes out of the box set to. Um, there's a few things you might wanna look at in the standard mode, which is, by the way, gonna give you sort of a brighter, more vibrant picture. Of course, it's gonna put a little bit more blue into the picture, into the whites, and so your colors won't be as accurate, but I think that's gonna be fine for a lot of folks. You look at this light sensor, and this is gonna change the picture depending on how much light is coming into your room to preserve highlights and make a generally more vivid picture if you've got a lot of light coming into the room or tone it down a little bit if it's a darker room. You can choose to turn this on or off. Generally, I would turn this off, especially when testing this TV because I want to kind of level the playing field. The other thing you might wanna look at is the motion. Um, again, Sony in their motion flow setting has things down at a very bare minimum. So this is gonna smooth out some of the motion, take away some of the judder or the stutter that you might get from a TV. Um, and this is perfectly fine for most people, but if you're a purist, again, you might wanna turn it off. Now, if you're a purist, you're probably not going to uh, select the standard mode. You're gonna want the cinema mode, or you might wanna go to custom and just customize everything right off the bat. But you'll notice with the cinema mode, our color temperature has warmed up a little bit. The light sensor has been turned off. And if we go down to the motion section here, motion flow is set to, again, custom with an even lower smoothness setting. You can turn this right off if you want to, which I will do for testing just to set again a baseline. But again, the point here is that you don't have to do much to the TV to get things looking really great. The out of box picture presets are fantastic right off the bat. Now, I do wanna point out before we get out of here that the settings I just made for the home screen are not going to apply to apps or to the HDMI input. So just a reminder that you will wanna go into your apps, hit the settings button, and go and pick your preferred picture settings for each of those. And remember that there are separate settings for your standard dynamic range content and your HDR content. So one of the things that I recommend people do is launch an SDR title, something that doesn't say Dolby Vision on it. In Netflix, for instance, make those settings, go into a Dolby Vision title. Again, adjust the settings to your preference. And then you're gonna want to do the same in YouTube. Since YouTube doesn't do Dolby Vision, you're gonna wanna go into YouTube. And again, pick an SDR video to make SDR settings. And then an HDR video to do your HDR settings there. 
rinse and repeat for your HDMI inputs and you'll finally be done. And yes, there is a little bit of footwork there to do, but like I said, you don't really have to touch those picture presets, most folks won't. So it's just a matter of picking the one that you want and then you're good to go. Okay, so first impressions, frankly, no surprises yet. And that's because it's a Sony OLED. They tend to look great out of the box. Any differences by the numbers between this year's version and the A80H from last year are gonna be minimal and only measurable. So we'll check out peak brightness and color accuracy. We'll dig into input lag, connect a PS5 and a Series X and check out what this TV can and can't do for gaming. There's still a lot to look at, but I gotta tell you, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of the best TVs of the year. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think so far? Also, don't forget to hit me up in the comments if you haven't already about what you wanna see in my review of this TV. And of course, you know, I'm gonna compare this to the A90J. So smash like and subscribe so you're among the first to check out those videos. And while you're here, here's two other videos I think you'll like.